Uh, welcome to lesson 37 of the course on industrial automation and control of NPTEL. Uh, in this lesson, we shall be talking about a computer network or a, rather I should say a, a network of intelligent devices which are used for industrial automation. So, it is a network, it is a digital com computer communication network. However, the various devices which talk on this network are the devices used for automation. For example, it can be a sensor or it can be a controller or it can be an operator station. So, we will see uh, how this, this sort of a network can, uh, has been proposed, its standard has been proposed and what kind of functionality and benefits it can bring for a factory wide control system. So, we start with the instructional objectives. So, the instructional objectives are firstly the student will be able to explain basic motivations for a plant network, how it actually helps to have a network for process automation. They will describe in the first part of this lecture which will be followed in the next lesson, will describe the physical network structure, how the various wires are connected <coughs> and what kind of advantages it brings in terms of you know installation commissioning. Secondly, it will describe the field work <coughs> bus network protocol, overall network protocol structure as we know that uh, computer communication is actually a complex uh, protocol where layers of software exist and they talk with each other to finally realize the communication between two uh, geographically uh, far away devices. Okay. So, we will first we will take a look at basic look at this structure and compare it with a with a general and there is a there is a general computer communication model which is very popular and well known that is called the open system intersect in interconnect model. So, it will <coughs> compare the protocol model of the field bus with the OSI model and you will be able to describe the mechanism of coordinating communication among the devices on the bus. Actually the lower two layers of this communication will be discussed in, in this part of the lesson. So, first of all we need to know what is a field bus. Actually a field bus is actually a digital communication network which is designed for interconnecting smart field bus devices and control systems for, for plant wide control and automation activities. So, previously also you know you could connect a remote sensor, a sensor which is somewhat far away to a particular let us say a controller. So, for that people used to use uh, various kinds of communication technologies. For example, people used to use uh, 4 to 20 milliampere analog technology where you know I mean current transmission used to be uh, used to be employed. Current transmission as we have seen uh, has you know certain benefits uh, in terms of noise immunity, but it is still a comparatively much more primitive technology which has several limitations. So, the field bus replaces this 4 to 20 ampere analog technology and it also provides integrated control and monitoring functions on field mounted devices. Previously what used to happen is that the field mounted devices mostly used to uh, were not able to perform computation. So, in that sense they were not able to they were not intelligent. So, they were mainly uh, devices. So, devices which will handle the power and will actually create the create the physical effect maybe in terms of flow for example, a valve maybe a maybe a valve positioner will actually drive the valve shaft or it can be a it can be a heater right. So, <coughs> previously the field monitoring devices were were unintelligent and therefore, the all the control monitoring activities had to be had to be situated at a at a at a host computer. So, every so all the signals had to be carried away to the central computer uh, incurring very large wirings and uh, making the data noise prone 
So, these defects will be removed if we can have some intelligent on the field mounted devices, so that some abstract command signals will actually come and the uh, control signals which have to be the low level control signals where the feedback is taken and the uh, controller actually generates the output such signals can be computed on the device itself. So, and it one of the great advantages of having a digital communication network is that it enhances data availability. So, now uh, one can very easily implement plant wide coordination activities. So, you can you can you can coordinate let us say suppose you have one shop which is feeding into into another shop or you have one assembly station which is feeding into another assembly station. So, if you want to coordinate the activity between these stations uh, for more efficient uh, production then 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 that is now possible because over a over a digital communication network it is much easier to easier easier and faster to share large amounts of data from from one device to another and therefore you can by using software you can have much more intelligent coordination in your uh, for for uh, efficient and reliable production so these are some of the features which are available on a field bus and naturally we have so one of the one of the why field bus one of the advantages is that you have high speed and reliable communication so you both increase speed and you increase reliability reliability comes from digital communication reliability comes from various kinds of special kinds of media like fiber optic cables used in the in the field bus system compared to wires which were used in the older systems. So, because this is very important here for two reasons. The first reason is that the first reason is that the industrial environment is actually very harsh right. So, there are lots of you know here somebody may be doing electric arc welding there are there are large power uh, current carrying conductors around. So, you have lot of magnetic and electric interferences. So, so the environment is very noisy. So, that so the chances of data getting corrupted are actually very high and second thing is that the consequences of having corrupt data because it is a control application as we have stressed many times over this course that this is industrial automation is a critical uh, kind of computing and uh, is, is, is necessary here. So, here if uh, data is corrupted then that can lead to a lot of you know devastating consequences in terms of money in terms of human safety and things like that. So, therefore, reliability of communication is actually extremely important. So, using field bus you increase both the speed of communication. So, you can exchange large amounts of data over small times and you can exchange them reliably. So, <coughs> then enhanced data availability we have we have we have already talked about them. So, you you can you can actually because of this network which you have you can actually exchange large amounts of data from devices and then can have a larger can have coordinations over over larger areas you can do monitoring you can do whole production process optimization. So, such functions it, it is now possible to do in an in an automated fashion and in a much more timely fashion than it was possible before. Then easy configurability and interoperability of system components this is actually very very important a, a process automation system contains hundreds and thousands of various kinds of electronic components. So, if you want if you want that each one will actually talk to another in, in a language you will actually exchange data in a format which, which is which, which is acceptable to the other and will uh, will make meaning of the data which it receives from the other then <coughs> you you need to configure them properly and configuring hundreds of thousands of uh, devices on a network is is not a simple task firstly. Secondly I mean devices always get added. So, every time you add a device you have uh, you have a configuration problem. Secondly second thing is interoperability. Interoperability means that two devices are interoperable when they when they talk seamlessly with each other. Now, previously what used to happen is that <coughs> because of the proprietary nature of the technology which which was not standard. So, you know company A will actually company A's controller will probably talk to company A's operator station, but it will not talk to company B's operator station. So, every company used to have their own standards. Now, when you have that once you buy certain parts of the equipment from a from a given company then you actually get tired to that company because if you buy anything else from from another company which may have better functionality which may be cheaper 
but still you are you are you are always stuck because it won't talk to the talk to the controller which you already have so that means that these devices are not interoperable so that problem has been removed because now it is it is it is demanded that all field bus compatible if you if any company manufactures a, de a device and it is declared to be field, uh, field bus standard compatible then it will be interoperable with any other field bus compatible uh, field bus compatible device from whatever company it is manufactured so therefore the options for the customer have increased many fold this will foster competition and will uh, bring in products of improved quality and, and functionality at cheaper costs so this is this has huge consequence so this is why you actually standardize uh, equipment it, 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 it's just like the pc market you know so if you if you you can always buy a a uh, let's say a network card from company b and a and a and a hard disk controller from company c and a motherboard from a and if you put them onto a onto a onto a pc cabinet they are going to work without any problem right so we want that kind of interoperability in the in the case of industrial automation also so that that is offered by field bus then there are huge wiring advantages that is because it's a because it's a <coughs> network on which devices are hung you have huge wiring advantages and remember that that wiring although it it it, it just means cables but these wires are these are data cables they are, they are they are not only expensive they have to be laid installed commissioned and they have to be maintained right so that's a that that's a huge task and therefore wiring is uh, the advantage of wiring is is also non trivial in the case of an industrial automation project see the wiring advantage how it comes it comes because of the fact that <coughs> if you have let's say 4 to 20 milliampere which means that a few number of devices have to be can be connected if you if you directly connect point to point communication then for every pair of devices you have to connect two wires to actually another point where it will where it will receive the data if you have 4 to 20 milliampere technology then on the same pair of on the same current loop you can connect a number of devices true but that number of devices are very less so what happens is that you 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 make a for example see this diagram that uh, here you have a number of devices so from each device you run a pair of wires and these are get connected to the junction box and from there they run through a wiring duct so each for each device you have a pair of wires then they get into a marshalling box and then finally connect to a connect to a controller io card now this so look at the look at the amount of wiring so for three you you need to run six three pairs of conductors contrasted to that look at a uh, <coughs> this is here see what happens is that here also here you have these field bus devices so the field bus devices <coughs> can be locally connected to a to a to a junction box or or let's say a remote i i mean some kind of an you know a, a a data concentrator if this that is if they cannot be directly hung from a network if they can be directly hung from a network that is that is that is even simpler and then from this junction box actually starts the network we'll see this physical configuration just now so here you have only one pair of wires over which digital data is transmitted either in baseband or in or by using modulation so <coughs> for all these devices you actually need to run just one pair of wires to the controller so the controller so so either these th this data that you have are actually time multiplexed so either the, either the time multiplex or if you use a you, if you use some kind of a carrier then it will be frequency division multiplex so <coughs> let's say in, in the case of uh, time multiplexing what is going to happen is, the, is, is that different devices are actually communicating high speed digital data on the same pair of wires actually at different times so and the and the and the controller which is here is actually receiving that stream of data and then from data that data it is actually able to understand that is which data is typically organized into what is known as packets and from by by examining each packet it, it actually understands that from which device this data packet is coming and to which device it should be it should go right so this is done all digitally using using digital electronics within the local controller so as far as wiring is concerned you actually run only 
one pair of wires. This is the big, this gives the biggest wiring advantage. There is <coughs> of, you know, having digital communication, but there is a further advantage which comes because you have a network bus. So we are going to look at that. So before we do that, so we, the here, is a, here is a comparison between 4 to 20 milliampere, which is a pretty old analog technology with field bus. So in, in a, here, you can have number of devices per wire is one. Sometimes you can connect some of some devices in series. In a field bus, you can connect s large number of devices and then these devices can be further increased by using, by using repeaters and, and other things like <coughs> On one device at a time, since you are sending a current, so you, you can actually send only one, one current, right? Because, because the data is continuous, all the time it is coming. While you can have thousands of variables can be, can be transmitted over the same pair of wires in the field bus. Signal integrity, because it is analog communication, although current communication is uh, more immune than voltage communication, uh, but still it is much more prone to degrading. <coughs> while the immunity of field bus devices because it's a, because it's, because it's digital data uh, it's quite excellent then diagnostic information because you have because in in the field bus because you have intelligent devices so therefore these devices the intelligent devices means they, these devices can actually examine their own signals and can do computing to actually understand whether the device is <coughs> working nicely or not properly or not or, or, or whether some fault has developed. So <coughs> such, such information is actually called diagnostic information. So you know <coughs> controllers can actually, actually need, a, need, a, need a lot of diagnostic information because uh, otherwise th when, when things are running in an, in an automated fashion one needs to know whether you know all actuators, sensors are actually giving you the right data or is it that the sensor has failed and, and, and the data that you are that you are uh, getting is actually uh, not proper. So in this case, the field bus devices themselves being intelligent, they themselves can evaluate their, their diagnostic state and then send information to the top level controllers based on which these controllers can take action, right? <coughs> and extensive diagnostic facility is provided for the field bus. <coughs> there is also support for field control that is PID like controllers can be mounted on the devices and they can be commanded from a, from a host station, they can, they can be configured. So such field level control support exists in field bus while none exists in the 4 to 20 milliampere loop. So this is, uh, this is the, this were the advantages coming back to this efficiency of physical connection. You can understand this. Suppose you have let me suppose you have you already have these nodes and they need to interact with each other right so if you have point to point communication then you need to connect all these wires right so you see the see the number of physical connections that that has to be made across the plant actually these these uh, distances can be quite substantial and <coughs> if you have a point to point communication system on the other hand, if you have a network, then you, are, then you are actually running a network all along the periphery of the plant. Now for example, suppose you want to add, suppose you want to add another device. So you put another device and suppose it actually talks to four other devices. So you have to now, you have to now connect all these four wires. If you had, comp if you had point to point communication. On the other hand, if you have a network, then what you will do is that you will simply hang this, simply connect this to the nearest point in the network, right? So it will simply be hung on the network and then it is on the network bus. So it can communicate with any, any other device on the network bus. So you can understand that you, if, if you compare, even in this diagram, if you compare the length of the yellow lines with those of the green lines, then you will understand that what is the what is the kind of cabling advantages that you can get when you have a bus or ring kind of network running all across the plant, right? And this diagram itself shows the picture, but 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 when you have thousands of such devices at that time, this this advantage becomes, I mean, predominant. 
here in this diagram you see how devices can be connected on the field bus. So, there are so you can connect them either you know like a tree. So, you can either have a separate branch from a tree. So, for example, here you see that this is the this is this is the main network bus running. From that network bus you can hang a a line which is a remote I O. Remote I O means that it is it is a it is a special electronic device which actually accepts data from a number of devices which are connected in a point to point fashion. So, this is a control device which is connected by a pair of wires to this remote I O. This is a positioner which is valve positioner suppose which is connected. So, similar now this device is actually a network device these are not network devices. So, this device will actually accept the data and will and then this device will transmit on the network after you know making packets out of it. So, this so you can you can connect a, a, a number of point to point devices to the network either directly like here. So, here you have a device which is which is which is directly connected onto the network bus this is the this is the main network bus running right. And either you can connect that or you can connect devices which are not directly network connectable with the help of what is known as a remote I O block right. So, these are the two ways that you can connect devices on the field bus. <coughs> For example, this this then shows that if you have a really a you know very wide plant area network which actually can run into you know kilometers if you have seen big factories you will know that uh, for example if you go to telco or if you want to go to tesco or some some big steel plant then you will see that this this factory is actually are several square kilometers so they are they are they are they are very large factories and therefore if you want to have a plant wide network then you can have you you you, you actually have to have very large long distances uh, are involved. So, this figure shows that that over such long uh, distances still you can actually configure a network. So, he you know he this is by using bus segments. So, there are several bus segments which can be directly connected over a cable and then several bus segments can be connected by by actually what are known as you know bridges or repeaters. So, you know this is a repeater. So, a repeater actually is you see connects this is a bus segment let me try a better color. So, this is a bus segment and this repeater actually talks to so, so, so whatever data. So, now suppose this number 4 device wants to talk with number 2. So, it will transmit this data on this bus it will go to the repeater and then the repeater knows whether this is actually meant for it will go to this repeater it will also go to this repeater. So, now this repeater will know that it is meant for its a device on its own segment. So, it will retransmit it on the bus while this repeater will know that that it is not meant for a device device number 2 does not exist on its on, on its on its segment. So, therefore, it will not transmit it. So, actually you can you, you can transmit data over from one segment to another using such repeaters and therefore, you can configure a very very uh, wide network or network which are which is sprawl which, which actually sprawls over uh, kilometers using a local area network technology. So, oh. so, this is this gives us an, an idea of how an industrial network is is physically connected. So, there is a there is a there is a bus which is running all over the all over the factory this bus may be segmented using repeaters etcetera. And then you have actually have to hang devices on this segments and then they will talk to other devices in that segment or in other segments. And using the the you can see that the field bus supports both all kinds of devices devices which are directly connectable on the network or which are not connectable on the network as well. So, now having understood the connectivity the actual physical connectivity let us come to the OSI network architecture. A typical a very generic general purpose network this is a very general purpose model and in, in the various special networks uh, you have 
you have a you have some sort of an adaptation of these network architecture in all networks adapt this generic OSI network architecture in in certain ways. So, in the generic standard you have actually when over a network when we when one computer talks to the another to another it need not know what is the network connectivity, what is the address you just you know you very very when one person chats with another person over over a long distance sometimes over the globe. So, it is it is actually a virtual communication, but actually physically these these data or the text suppose which you are typing has to physically travel from your network across various communication channels and physically reach the other computer which may be thousands of miles away. So, this is achieved through a layer of protocols ok, each protocol gives a service to the protocol above. So, that the protocol above and 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 hides certain unnecessary details from the from from the protocol above. So, this is the protocol above always sees its own communication as a as across some across some virtual channel and is freed from several you know technical details otherwise it would have been I mean absolutely impossible for us to to do any communication over over a network. So, so the communication is actually goes is whole system is actually organized in layers and any message which is generated at a at a at a at a top layer will come down across the layers finally, reach the communication channel and the the electrical communication then it will travel across various you know uh, nodes and then finally, will go up and reach the top layer of the destination uh, process. So, you have typically you have physical layer which is actually the electrical layer where the actual electrical communication takes place modulation communication over any medium fiber optic radio wire whatever. Data link layer is the next layer which actually provides uh, increases the, the, the reliability of the electrical communication. So, here the data is not it, it is still treated as you know binary data packets are assembled error codes are uh, attached. So, that during transmission if some data error occurs that can be detected. These transport and network layers actually uh, take care of the networking problems. So, firstly it does things like routing. So, if you want to trans if you want if you are sending an email message from here to Japan from your say your uh, host to whom you send where should it go. So, this this kind of the, the, this kind of routing information is uh, routing is done by network layer. Then there are sometimes you know they they do you know things like congestion control. So some particular channels may be may be down, they may be choked. So if data is not going through these channels, they will they will there are there are mechanisms by by which uh, people can do things like flow control. So this network and transport layers actually. Uh, take care of the network topology, loading and network communication. So, once you have taken care of these from the session and presentation layers it appears as if you have a this is the physical communication, this is the physical communication, digital communication, this is the network configuration and network performance ensuring. So, once you have these two layers, these layers sitting on this and this actually sees a some kind of a virtual session between two computers. So, it does not know it is completely oblivious of how through which path in the network this particular message is going. So, it does not know it just knows. So, it, it sets a session presentation layers are generally uh, rudimentary they, they are not uh, very strong and it is the application layer which is you know application layers are are configured for typical uh, typical kinds of application like you know you, you want to have a remote terminal. So, you your your you want your PC to actually work as a as a terminal to a server which may be elsewhere on the network. So, this is a this is a remote terminal service there can be an email service right. So, <coughs> so these these various kinds of common kinds of applications various kinds of appli FTP service. So, file transfer. So, such app things are uh, the particular details of these are actually handled by the application layer and the application layer once. So, then the, then the application layer actually calls a session layer 
calls the session layer and says that you please set up a session for this particular application and then the session layer gives those its its session uh, messages to the transporter network layer which decides how it will go and then they actually finally puts all the addresses etc and then finally these get to the data link layer and then they actually are transmitted in the medium the user layer not normally this user layer in th this is osi network layer is a, a network architecture is actually a seven layer protocol which does not have the user layer because for general purpose computing the user layer can be of enormous variety so therefore the user layer is actually not specified but as we will see that in the particular case of industrial automation networks this is adapted right so what is done is we will we'll skip these slides and see the field bus network architecture so in the field bus network architecture there are there are, there are certain uh, differences so first difference is that the network in in the factory is actually fixed it does not change second thing is that the what kind of messages that is the loading on the network how many messages are coming frequency of messages arriving on the network are also more or less constant because you know all the time i mean once it is designed it is fixed it is not that uh, uh, new processes are being i mean large number of new processes can be suddenly generated because we know what kind of computations are actually going on in this in this <coughs> network so therefore this you know this what i mean to say is that the transport and network layer functionality is nearly removed so therefore it's good to remove the transport and network layer therefore the field bus network actually does not have actually has very rudimentary transport and network layer right so <coughs> so it has a physical layer it also has the data link layer which you know does also part of the little bit of it actually puts the addresses uh, it actually ensures the that, that is who will transmit when say the say, say the medium access protocol etc for cyclic and acyclic communication is a, is also hand, handled in the data link layer and this layer 3 through, through 6 that means session presentation and application are actually actually application is there 3 to 5 i, I would say uh, physical data link uh, network transport and session layers networks no nah, 3 to 3 through 6 networks transport session and presentation these four layers are actually removed then on top of that you have an you have an application layer which application layer is so you have field bus application layer which is broken into two sub layers one is called the field bus message sub layer the other is called the the, the field bus access sub layer so uh, uh, using so the, the the field bus access sub layer provides various kinds of addressing uh, addressing functionality and the field bus message sub layer actually uh, configures the 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 messages which are coming from the user layer so in contrast the field bus network proposes an a major user layer because here the computations are not of that much variety number one they are largely uniform they are they are, they are all for process automation tasks and, and secondly because of the fact that you know uh, it is necessary for easy configurability it, it, it is necessary that the so enormous flexibility is actually not needed so you can you can create various kinds of uh, templates and you can you can create a separate layer within which it will be it will be easier for the for the application engineer for the for the process engineer to actually program his application so therefore a, an user layer is proposed so one layer is added and four layers are deleted so you have a this is the field bus protocol structure so you have finally the field bus architecture so you have the physical layer the data link layer and the application layer broken up into two parts and then you have the user and uh, user layer which involves feed uh, the function blocks which are you know abstract uh, computing blocks which specify abstract communication let us say between between an analog input device and a process controller or a process controller and an analog output device so the, it, it will just abstractly describe this in terms of function blocks and then the network uh, communication through this i mean among these function blocks will be will be automatically realized by this part of the network right so <coughs> 
so this is the this is the field bus protocol in this lesson we will be mainly concentrating on the data link layer and the physical layer physical layer we have already discussed and in the next lecture we will be talking about the user layer and the field bus application layer So the field bus, as, as I was telling, it defines user layer for interoperability so that you know every, every device, so all the field bus devices are, have to be of a certain, have to be of a certain standard as far as software interfacing or data formats are concerned. So those data formats have been already specified in the standard and any field bus device must comply with that standard so that they, they can be become immediately interoperable. And these are defined in the user layer protocols. The field bus message specification, so the user layer just abstractly gives, so, so maybe there may be an analog input block simply in its user layer, it, it, it simply generates a value. So this particular temperature signal has to go to the PID controller, it says. Now for transmitting that to the PID controller, this has to be actually made into a message and then a message has to be configured into a packet and then it has to be sent with after all the addressing etc. So the field bus message specification, the field bus message specification actually builds up the builds up the message data structure for communication as per requirements and in fact there may be several function block processes within a device. So all these devices frequently are generating data so they have to be put in the form of messages and then transmitted. And then the field bus access sub layer, once it gets the packet, this is to be transmitted, then it, then the field bus access sub layer adds, you know, addresses and the networking information such that this can actually reach another device on the bus. You know, each device has, has a unique address so and, and, and unless you, since there is a shared medium, unless you transmit your messages, unless your messages contain addresses, the devices will not be able to understand whether a, whether a particular data that it has seen because everybody is actually listening on the same bus. People are transmitting on the same bus and every device is actually listening on the same bus and picking up the data which is meant for it. So the field bus access sub layer provides in this way by providing addresses provides a virtual communication channel so that nobody, the top layers do not need to worry about how this, how each device is actually sensing and then picking up the data meant for it. So it need not bother about that. The data link layer actually manages the communication protocol. It takes care of the, the digital communication details, error coding, parity checking, etc. And the physical layer provides the, the electrical and medium dependent. So if you have wire, uh, if you have RF, then it, there has to be radio transmission. If you have fiber optics, then there has to be optical communication. So all these details are handled by the physical layers. And okay, levels to three to six are dropped for efficiency. So, without going into the physical layer, because that involves a lot of you know electronics basically, and generally communication electronics. So we don't want to get into that in this course. So rather, we look at the data link layer. In the data link layer, the features are uh, that you have centralized bus mastership this is very important to understand because the because you are having a bus on which everything is hanging right so if you talk if a particular device transmits on this bus there is signal existing everywhere on this connector so all the other devices can get it and it is very important that no two two devices never transmit data on at the same time on the medium because then the data is going to be garbled. So therefore there has to be a there has to be a device which will decide who will speak at what time on the bus. So this is achieved by what is known as bus mastership. So the bus master distributes the right to transmit among the devices depending on their needs and depending on how you have configured it. Communication can be cyclic as well as cyclic that is some devices will every say one second they, they will send a packet, so they require cyclic communication. There are some may be acyclic where which may be suddenly required, maybe due to some alarm condition and things like that. So these two kinds of communication are supported by the data link layers. And sometimes you have features for connection oriented as well as connection less data transfer. This is connection less. So you can have broadcast where you are not giving 
addresses or you can have a connection oriented that it, that this meant for only this node only right so this these are supported by the data link layer so pictorially it looks like this so on the bus this is a field bus there are various devices these are basic devices bd basic devices and these are link masters so lm is a kind of device which is capable of becoming a link master and the and there is among the link masters there is a particular device which is called the active link link active scheduler so at this time this this is a, this link master can also become the link active scheduler but it is at this time idle so these are idle sometimes we provide more link masters because if but for some reason this link master fails then who will ensure the communication so there are some other link masters which are always kept in hot standby so that they will they can they can immediately take over the communication and the control and coordination will continue this is very important right so exactly same diagram this is repeated so th these are link masters and their basic devices basic devices are not capable of becoming link masters or link active schedulers while link masters are capable of becoming link active schedulers so ld is a linking device uh, ld interfaces h1 segments with an hse or i don't know what hse means link master that's what i said bd is basic device a device not capable of becoming a link master so link active scheduler is the is as i said it, it is a bus master which distributes right to transmit to all devices it is actually a functionality some some software which may be, may be present in several link masters for fault tolerance and it is actually it actually does the scheduling of the various you know soft and hard real time communication tasks so soft real time communication tasks are those which also need to be finished in time but even if they are slightly delayed there is not so much of a problem but hard real time tasks are those if you cannot finish those tasks those computing and communication tasks in time then the system may completely collapse right so it, it must so for you in your scheduling you have to take care such that the hard real time tasks are, are definitely finished within time so the link mark link active scheduler also has to you know the, these you can always keep on as, as we said that there is easy configurability so you can add a device simply to the network and the link active scheduler also has to look for whether some new device has been connected and then has to configure them and then have to take care of their communication needs so it also searches for added and removed devices similarly it, if a device is removed it has to take it off from its scheduling list for cyclic communication typically applicable in in the case of control so you know transfer process variable or transfer valve position valve position is just an example so it continuously has to take the process variable compute the controls and then output to an output device so this uh, goes on right so uh, mm, this is an example of cyclic communication so if there is cyclic communication what the what the link active scheduler does is that it issues a cd or compel data token to a to a particular device so once the compel data token is given this uh, this device to which this cd token was issued must respond with a data token right and then this it, it, this it will send on the bus and then all the devices are actually all the time looking for the data so so the device which needs that data token will actually uh, will receive it and will take it and then use it for acyclic communication acyclic communication typically occurs when you have alert or event notifications you have some operator data update sometimes you like to see some trends so you can ask for some trend data you can change set points or you can change give other kinds of commands to change operating modes collect uh, collect maintenance information etc so these are these are not cyclic informations but demand driven sometimes if they are invoked then that communication has to be ob obtained for this the las polls each device with a with a with a pt token pt is a pt is a pass token so if you if if a device has something to communicate it will take the pass token and then will communicate if it doesn't have if it doesn't uh, have 
anything to uh, anything to communicate it will it will simply pass the token to the next device so whoever needs it will hold the token and then will transmit the data and the communication is actually organized overall into cycles called macro cycles and within each macro cycle so macro cycle is the basic cycle over which the over which the the communication is periodic and then within macro cycles you have elementary cycles so an elementary cycle is decided by the fastest by the device which needs to communicate the fastest so you know if you have so let's let, let's see the next example we'll, we will understand it better so for example take this loop this this is a, this is a pid loop with say an analog input and a pid and an analog output so these are you know, actually you know on 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 different devices and the analog input so they are all on the network and the analog input this is a this is a function block representation so virtually this ai must communicate with pid and then pid must communicate with ao and they are actually physically different devices so in this case you see that uh, suppose there are so this is an example you know of several devices so so, so suppose it can very well happen that one device needs to talk two times in in one second cyclic both are cyclic but another device w needs to talk only once so you see how it is organized so you have a you have a so the macro cycle is actually decided by the slowest device so since here the slowest device talks needs to talk only every one second so therefore you have a one second macro cycle on the other hand the elementary cycles are decided by the fastest device so in this case the fastest device needs to talk twice in a second so therefore in one micro cycle macro cycle you have two elementary cycles so first time what happens is that c cd1 dt1 so the first device talks then cd2 dt2 the second device talks and then some time is in this elementary cycle some time is kept free this time is kept for the for uh, acyclic communication so if there is any acyclic communication requirement then this ptn and dtn suppose this some uh, nth device needs to do some acyclic communication so this pt will be passed and this and this dt will be transmitted now in the next micro cycle you see that because cd1 and dt1 speaks because it needs to talk twice in a second while cd2 and dt2 is skipped because the second device does not need to speak uh, twice in a second and this whole time is actually utilized for uh, for for acyclic communication and then the next two acyclic communication cycles go on and in the th so now this micro cycle macro cycle ends and the second macro cycle begins so the first elementary cycle of the second macro cycle is here in which again cd1 cd2 and cd2 uh, uh, cd1 dt1 and cd2 dt2 will take place so this is the basic way in which the communication goes on here so for example see in that in that communication loop things are serialized also so first in this communication loop what happens is that first the ai101 to pid101 takes place so the analog input gives feedback to the pid controller then the pid controller uh, pid controller now the pid control as we had seen in the previous diagram that the previous pid controller and the analog output devices were on the same physical device so so there is no need for communication so this pid controller giving value to ao is there there is no need for communication but this analog output may may also be may also have to be transmitted to the host or some some operator station which wants to see what kind of outputs are going to the plant so for that you need a communication so that is so so at this point of time so the here the analog input process computes input samples and then a communication is scheduled after this communication ends the pid data has got the result so it will compute and then the pid will directly give and then the ai block will will compute this this does not require any communication because the pid and the ao block are on the same physical device no communication is required and then the ao block will communicate on the network with the host right so this is the way the this 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 pid loop computation and and communication will go on
So, this brings us to the end of the lesson. So, let us review it. So, in this lesson we have seen the basic introduction and, and motivation of having a network. So, obviously here I would like to make a comment that obviously there are there are advantages of having a network over you know a simple analog or point to point digital communication system. But one has to remember that the investments required for the field bus network, <coughs> all kinds of software, the smart field bus devices, all these things I mean the, the application domain must be large enough and must require uh, enough quality and enough. Uh, that is the cost of setting up this field but bus network must be justified. So, even if it is even if it is you know quite elaborate and gives lot of functionality, but uh, one should have need for that functionality and uh, using that functionality I mean revenue should uh, be should be returned. So, that is the this is we have this is another comments. So, introduction and motivation then we have seen the physical layer features and we have seen that how these are connected how these are to be connected and how using uh, repeaters and then the digital communication you can have very large networks and you can have wiring advantages and you can have very reliable data communication. Then we have seen the network protocol architecture and we have seen that it is basically some kind of an adaptation for the special purpose of plant wide control of the OSI layers and we have seen the what are the layers existing in the, in the field bus architecture. Then we have seen the mechanisms for arbitrating communication rights among the network devices. So, how cyclic and acyclic communication goes on by and how centralized bus masters issue tokens to particular devices which take them and then transmit data. So, this brings us to the last thing points to ponder some questions. So, for what kind of application is the network such as field bus justified right. So, I raise this point immediately. So, you can think of some application where this will be justified. Why are network and transport layers absent in the field bus network? This also has been discussed. Which communication mode constitutes the dominant traffic cyclic or acyclic? So, you can think of the various process automation tasks and then decide which is mentioned two advantages of distributed control over centralized control. So, with this I would like to conclude today. Thank you very much. Welcome to lesson 38 of the course on industrial automation and control under the NPTEL program. In the last lesson we had been talking about the field bus network and we had seen the basic nature of the protocol. Uh, we had seen the bottom layers, the connectivity, the data link layer where basic cyclic and acyclic communication is realized. In this lesson we are going ahead and we shall take a look at the two upper layers of the field bus network namely the field bus application layer and the user layer. So, looking at the instruction objectives describe communication protocol supported by the field bus access sub layer as we have mentioned before the field bus application layer is actually consisting of two sub layers. One is the field bus message specification <coughs> uh, or for field bus message sub layer and the other is typically referred to as FMS and the other is the field bus access sub layer or FAS. So, here we will describe communication protocol supported basic features of field bus access sub layer. Then the virtual data services which are supported by the field bus supported by the field bus message sub layer. So, we will basically take a look at access sub layer functionality and MS uh, uh, FMS functionality. So, that you understand the basic purpose of it. Then we will go over to the user layer and after this you should be able to understand the basic architecture of a field bus device and how user computation is done. And finally, we will take 
a look at the various system network and time management functions that are essential to realize a virtual distributed control system, right. So, here we have communication within a control loop that same diagram, so we will skip it and we have already seen this that we uh, how we communicate using cyclic and acyclic communication over, over macro cycles and using elementary cycles. And we have also seen this, so you see that is what I was talking that the inputs will be sampled, then there will be some communication, then the PID block will execute, then the analog output block will execute because they are on the same device, no communication needed, then the output block will communicate to host, right. So, in this way communication will be scheduled uh, by the system management, the, the rather the computation will be scheduled by the, by the, by the system management functionality for control. So, ne again network and system management, so it basically involves address and tag assignment and maintaining them and when a, when a device comes on, uh, recognizing that device, when a device goes out of the network, removing it from the scheduling list. So, all these are network address and tag assignment and, and management, then time synchronization, function block starting, execution management and network management. So, we have come to the end before that let us review the lesson. So, we have looked at the FAS sub layer which basically defines the virtual communication channel and provides three different kinds of communication channel. Then we looked at the FMS sub layer which provides 42 or 42 is a number which keep changing. So, different kinds of information services and provides the message data structures for those services. And finally, we saw the field bus device architecture which actually lets the mm, uh, manufacturer provide a standard interface to their computation while maintaining their own proprietary flexibility. So, we saw the function blocks under execution and the system and network and time management functions. Before we end points to ponder, so mention one control monitoring task each, right, Th that is suited to the communication model supported by the FAS. So, QUB, uh, B, <coughs> BNU, QUU, e for each one try to find a task which, which can use that model. Explain how the functions of the FMS are different from that of the AS. This is clear. Why is the transducer block vendor specific? Function block is not. This is also clear mentioned in the lex lesson. How is it ensured that a PID FB receives its inputs? That is by scheduling done by the system management using link schedule time. That is all and thank you very much.